God bless you today. I pray that you're having a good day, that God is leading you, guiding you, and protecting you in everything that you do. The Holy Spirit last night was speaking to me and showing me things in the ER. I was in the ER again with my father who was having some readjustments with this catheter. And so uh, the Lord was allowing me to see things going on in the ER. Over 130 million people visited the ER in 2013 in the United States. And it's unbelievable. You know the numbers have gone up since then. And so today the Lord confirmed it with an email that came in through Trace in the Exian province. And so I wanted to just share that with you. And she says, I hope I'm not too late to get the pictures in for the healing meeting that we'll be having on the 18th. And no, you're not too late. You just continue to send in these pictures and what needs to be prayed for because we're going to be doing a live program as well for <clears throat> this Friday night for healing. And so we're just continuing to pray together in Jesus' name. Father, we lift up the oil. We thank you, Lord, that you're always with us. Now lead us, guide us, protect us, Father, in everything that we do, in Jesus' name. And guide us, Father, to that person that might need a word today, a prayer whatsoever, Father. There are no coincidences. We know this in Jesus' name. Okay. She writes in, <clears throat> <clears throat> father is a, ty a tyrannic committed suicide mother handicapped get a picture for this father committed suicide the mother is handicapped after her husband threw her off a first floor balcony she kept in abiding interest in the occult until she passed away. Sister was shot, not mortally, by a boyfriend who then proceeded to take his own life. Ex-husband now fighting cancer. Son died of cancer last year at age 42 approximately. Daughter got pregnant at an early age and had the pregnancy terminated. terminated. The boyfriend at the time abandoned her. This afterwards made her mentally unstable and for years she was in and out of mental institutions. And these are just the things I know. Can you imagine? You know, we look at our neighbor, <clears throat> if some of you see your neighbor frequently from time to time, and you might say, hello, how are you? And you'll wave, you know, nice to see you. But how many of us know what is going on within the walls of the home? Thank God we can pray for that neighbor that we don't know, but God does know what is going on. Thank God the Lord sees behind closed doors. There was even that song, Behind Closed Doors. It's unbelievable. The adultery, the sins, the traumas, things that are wrong, things that are, they think, in hiding but truly God sees it all. <clears throat> she says, she writes here, Monique now chronic depression, poverty, loneliness, rejected by many, probably in part because of her neediness. She is a Christian, but feels that her prayers are to no avail. Do some of us feel sometimes like our prayers are to no avail? I prayed, I prayed, I prayed for this healing and it's just not happening. What's going on? Why? And then we get discouraged, we get depressed, we get angry <clears throat> and we're 
like, what do I do, Lord, to get this? We're so into us. We're so into what we want. And maybe not what, I'm not saying God wants us sick. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying we must submit our lives daily. You must know God sees you right where you are. And you must walk in faith. And you must never, ever give up but stay in peace in the name of Jesus. Total discouragement. She sees herself as a victim. Do we see ourselves as a victim sometimes? And our feelings were offended. <clears throat> she expects the initiatives to come from others. Are we sitting waiting for someone to come to us, waiting for that initiative. I, I'll never forget people that I would talk to on the phone. I'd say, what's happening today? Oh, I'm just sitting here waiting around for God to show me. In the meantime, get up and do something. At least if you cannot get up and you are bedridden, then pray. You can pray. You can pray expects the initiatives to come from others constantly under spiritual attack she's constantly under spiritual attack well we know that there are prayers that we can continue to pray if we feel someone is under spiritual attack or we are <clears throat> it says the word says continue to rebuke the devil and he will leave you some spirits come out by fasting and prayer also. So whichever way the Lord leads you, you need to find your space with the Lord and say, what do I do, Lord? Do I fast? Do I, cont of course, you're going to continue to rebuke him, but you must stay in the word. You must maybe get rid of a few things or people or situations in your life. I don't know. But you need to seek the Lord on these things. <clears throat> Yet the lady is the first person who spoke to me about Jesus in terms I found moving. And one of the first people I informed of my own conversation. Monique has a heart of gold and is actually paying to support three African <clears throat> orphans though she barely has enough herself to make ends meet. Unbelievable. Has barely enough to support all of them. I sense a generational curse over this family. Please pray for her on March 18th. I'm trying to get a photo of her, but I'm not sure that I will have it in time. That this dark cloud be lifted off of her and her loved ones, that the sins of her parents be washed clean by the blood of Jesus, and that the chains of the enemy on her be smitten asunder. The chains of the enemy be smitten asunder. Father, we thank you that you go in and you pull out the strong man in the name of Jesus. We thank you that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We thank you, Father God, that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And we thank you, Father, that you continue to move in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, that you continue to move and teach us how to pray in Jesus' name. Um, I wanted to also make a mention of a couple of scriptures here Hebrews 13 1 through 3 concluding exhortations keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters do not forget to show hospitality to strangers for by doing so some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Continue to remember those in prison as if you were together 
with them in prison. And those who are mistreated as if you yourselves are suffering or suffering. So this is the way that the Lord wants us to get a picture. He wants us to remember that the hospitality that we show to strangers as he leads, as he leads, could be an angel, could be an angel with a special message for you, could be just a person that needs to come closer to Christ, that God is putting in your path and he's saying, will you take a moment? Will you speak some love to this person? Continue to remember those in prison as if you were together with them in prison. In prison. That's something that a lot of people don't want to think about. When the Lord first called me to go to prison, to, uh, to jail, actually, it was medium security jail, uh, wayside on a rancho in Castate for eight years. I ministered there. I knew the Lord was sending me there. He told me before I was even going. And then the three chaplains came up to Stephen and I, and they said, we want you to come. And I said, I already knew that. The Lord already showed me that. It was no surprise to me. I was just thankful that, okay, now it's beginning. Now that season is beginning. <clears throat> and I began to think, people would ask me, they'd say, well, who do you know in jail? And I said, I don't know anybody in jail, but God told me that I'm going, and so I'm going. But I'll tell you one thing. Every single time that we went in jail, we didn't know what the Lord was going to have us say because we ministered at that moment. He put the words in our mouth. You may not know anybody in jail. God may not be speaking to you to go to jail. But God may be speaking to you to pray for somebody in jail. He may even say, go witness to them. But remember to use wisdom because the enemy is there greatly as well. And so you must remember to do exactly as he says, because you never know what's going to be happening. But follow the leading of the Lord people would come up to us, the inmates, and they would be crying at the end of every single service. They would crowd around us just like they wanted to just say one word, one word to us before we left. Because they knew when they walked out that chapel door and they walked into their little room that they were staying in, that they were just stacked together on these single beds like sardines, that they would have to encounter the devils out there. So this was a place of peace for them. And they didn't, uh, the, the spirit of God moved so greatly in jail. I cannot even begin to tell you, you know, we take for granted that we can just walk in a church and we can, you know, some people get upset with what happens in the church, but the spirit of God moves greater in jail. I can surely, I, I bear witness of this for eight years. I've seen it. It was Unbelievable how strong, supernatural the Lord would move in jail. And so we must remember to pray for those in prison as if you were together with them in prison. And those who are mistreated as if you yourselves were suffering. Are you suffering in your situation? Do you know someone that is suffering? And my hands are pulsating. So I know that that's bearing witness to somebody needed to hear this message. And those who are mistreated, as if you yourselves were suffering. We must have compassion. The Lord uh, brought me to the words also hospitality. The friendly and generous reception and entertainment of guests, visitors, or strangers. Friendliness, warm reception, welcome. Do we make people feel welcome just being around them? If you're in the marketplace or wherever you are, are you friendly 
with strangers? Or do you look the other way? Don't look at them. Don't make eye contact. Is there cordiality? Is, are, is there courtesy? Courtesy. Is there catering of food even? That's another way that we can show hospitality. <clears throat> so these are all things that we see happening hopefully in the hospitals that the nurses, the RNs, the doctors are showing care as though it were their loved one in that bed, in that situation. People did not know that my father was a fireman, that he drove fire trucks for many years because that season is over in his life for many years ago. They had no clue what he did. When you look at somebody walking on the street, you look at someone sleeping on a bench, you have no idea what happened in the seasons before in their life. You have no idea who you're really talking to. Could be a multimillionaire that just lost it all. You just don't know. So it's very important that we ask the Holy Spirit, what do I do? What do I do here, Lord? What do I do? Well, number one, we can pray. That is the very number one thing. And that is what the Lord wanted me to talk about today. The other sad thing that I noticed in the news was that Colorado visitors are using pot and ending up in the ER. This was February 25, 2016, over a year ago, this article was posted by CNN. Weed-related emergency room visits are on the rise in Colorado since voters approved the legislation of rental marijuana, rental marijuana, 2012, and the sales began in 2014. And these incidents are increasing more dramatically among out-of-state visitors, according to research published Wednesday in the New England Journal of Medicine. Medicine. This isn't the first time we've seen the negative impacts of marijuana. A case of use in Colorado published in 2015 found increases in marijuana-related traffic deaths hospital visits, school suspensions, lab explosions, and pet poisonings. In that study, marijuana-related ER visits increased 57% from 2011 to 2013. What do you think they are today? What do you think is happening today? <clears throat> and it's, it's unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. It's, it's just so sad. We see, it says the findings of this study also have implications for other states where recreational marijuana is legal, such as Alaska, Oregon, and Washington, the authors said. The biggest thing needs to be a public education campaign, said a lead invest, investigator, Dr. Howard Kim, following a fellow in emergency medicine at Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine and an emergency medicine physician at Northwestern Medicine. It, it is so sad. Father, we just stop and we just thank you for this day, Lord. It, it is so sad what's happening in the world, Lord, but you see everything. You place us exactly where you want us, Father. Now we lift up all of this all of this, Lord, to you. We ask you, Father, to use us to pray peace into somebody's life today. We pray that people will be looking at us and asking us to pray for them, to share with them about our life, that we may draw them, Lord, closer to you, <clears throat> that you will draw them, Holy Spirit, to us so that we can be a witness for you in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, bless us as we go our way. Help us, Lord, to be good examples, good witnesses for you in everything. 
in Jesus' name. A sobering day. We are in a sobering day. I love you. Thank you so much for your gifts, donations to the ministry. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, James. Thank you, Donald. Thank you, Larry. In the name of Jesus, we lift these up, Lord. We ask you to bless those that have given, those that are praying. Father, bless them. Father, we ask that you bless us this day and that, Father, you use us in the greatest way you can use us in this final hour, this final season we find ourselves in. In Jesus' name, I love you. Have a blessed day and be listening for the voice of the Holy Spirit. For he said he will lead us and guide us into all truth. So we must keep our ear to him in Jesus name. Have a blessed day. You never know where he's going to put you today. I love you. Just like Noah's door, I'm coming.